I um, put the oh, put the panel uh, on this bench for testing the testing bench. Um, let me drop you a little bit. Um, so that's it. Um, they're connected straight to the transformers. So I made this panel so I could segment it. So there's a small or there's gonna be a part, a few wires that's gonna play high frequency um, and the rest uh, won't. They all play full range except for the sides won't play high frequency. This is to create far far better dispersion, that's one. Um, it also counters this uh, 6 dB rise or the other way around the drop off. Um, and it doesn't load the transformers as much in the high frequency uh, part, the part where usually, which usually is kind of hard for these. Um, so, and this is the thing, uh, to be of a use for me, or a success for me at least, I must be able to use this, these kinds of transformers. So no special audiophile electrostatic transformer and crib, but just plain pteroids, uh, 6 volt, 220. Two of them, these are 25 volt ampere, and it's more than enough. Might even get smaller ones, although in price it doesn't really matter much anymore. But you don't need a 100 volt ampere or something. It's just uh, it's playing mid range and tweeter duty. Maybe not even that much mid range. So you can get away with really tiny transformers. Uh, but it has to be pteroids. Uh, the configuration in this case is uh, the previous uh, secondaries are now my primary, so I'm gonna call them my primaries from now on. So if I say primaries, it's actually the secondaries of this transformer because we use them backwards. So from now on, their secondary is my primary. So the primaries are uh, in series and the secondaries are in series as well to create a center tap and uh, double the step up ratio. So it's like a 70 or something, 75, I don't know, 220 or 230 divided by 6 times 2. Too much for me, <laughs> but uh, yeah. So that's our step-up ratio. Um, if I parallel my primaries, uh, the high frequency will drop off at, at 12k or something. So uh, yeah, so I had to do them in series, and it does, didn't make much difference in output, but it did make a huge difference in um, in how far it extended. So I'll show you. This is a typical um, typical what you get from an uh, electrostatic speaker. Uh, what these tiny things here, here and here are, I don't know yet. Could be anything by the way. Could be uh, my window was open as well and it's raining quite hard so it could be anything. Could also be the panel itself, not sure. But uh, well now it extends to 18k well it reaches 20k but the peak is at 18 and uh, the thing is if you're gonna filter it this peak will get flat so uh, yeah so it's still not straight up to 20k uh, not sure why uh, I think going even thinner on the mylar could help as well but it might might be as well the transformers not wanting to go any higher. Uh, these are Amplimo, but um, I think Bolsert from DIY Audio tested some uh, transformers 
and uh, they were cheap also teroids smallish I think 15 volt ampere or something I know you can get them on Fernal and RS I think and they are dirt cheap so that said uh, distortion yeah well <laughs> nothing much to see here of course so that's um, pretty decent I'm pretty sure most of this is uh, even uh, crap in the background um, output it's not that it's not really loud uh, which is not so weird because it's a really small panel spacing from mylar to conductor or wire in this case is 0 0.8 I think it was and the step up ratio on the transformers is not really high either so this was a test and this is 30 centimeter of uh, stuff and I was planning on using 60 or, or 90 or something or maybe a meter so by doubling the size you will uh, gain some dB so I might triple it or quadruple it because I want to mate them with the panel that's sitting behind there the planar big gun thing and they have a rather low efficiency but uh, I want to match match it of course with the electrostatic tweeter and I prefer to have it even a little bit louder not when in use but to be able to put it a little bit louder or uh, or you know just have some headroom if it's just just making the same uh, efficiency uh, I have no headroom to play with anymore so uh, I made it up with the, the panel the big gun and uh, then you get this sort of it's not perfect but uh, as of yet I mean they're too small so they uh, drop off a little bit too early so but that's all due to size I, they are really tiny not right now so if I make them bigger that should not be a problem anymore also I want to cross them at 1k or something with a very sloppy 60b slope and now I cross them at 1k and here it's 800 it might be 1k that's perfectly fine but uh, remember that the panels are too small as of yet here I uh, <laughs> did the filtering that I'm gonna do not in uh, a DSP and also not in a filter but just with uh, resistors on the panel but I didn't have the resistors uh, laying uh, here so I just used the mini DSP to um, simulate the same this is to counter this um, this so now it is flattened from around here and uh, when there is more panel I will uh, this will all go up and I'll probably filter it from around here or here I don't know so it's a flat curve and uh, yeah then it's easy to cross it over of course but uh, yeah so I'm pleased not so pleased with coding wise stuff so I'm still in, in the dark what to use because I want it to be stable and uh, I don't want to fuck around with it more than once so but uh, I'll show you only the panel so this is the panel only crossed at 1k so I don't expect any low end like the at my fate he's a victim of gravity the unbearable color of things gets him down some lightning outside and as his wrinkled covers me we know it was never raining Me, was I thinking aloud? This, of course, 
with the panel behind it. etc. So, uh, yeah, um, well, I've learned some stuff uh, in this uh, whole thing. First of all, it should be possible to match my um, big guns with cheap transformers. Um, with cheap transformers, that's about it. And this size, by the way, as well. Um, also, the glue or the wire jig works really well. Uh, gluing it is not so much, I'm not sure what you, glue to use, it's usually a, a problem with speed and quality and uh, CA glue does actually both not so great. First of all it doesn't dry that fast, although it's called second glue or like one second glue in, in the Netherlands, it certainly uh, is more like a one hour glue if you use uh, this much uh, and also it's very brittle and it it, it's, it looks crappy and I'm um, not so not a fan of it so I want to use something different but I'm not sure there is nothing that is faster than CA glue so I don't know maybe epoxy and then the really fast one but it, it all also uh, the viscosity is usually way too high. I want a very low viscosity so it runs in between the wires and doesn't leave like a hump since it's all about flatness. I need something that doesn't leave any humps. So that's one. Um, then the frame. This HPL is nice. Uh, the stick configuration on the back. Yeah, it works but of course it is kind of... Um, yeah. You know, it's not, especially this double sticks is not working that well. I might gonna try it with single sticks um, and then use a little bit more. Um, just try it. But I would like to have something uh, else. But the whole frame I would like to make simpler to make. I mean it's still too much work. I mean the stretching the wires I can handle but the frame I can handle as well but I don't want to. It has to be faster and simpler. Uh, every now and then you get this idea that's you know something really simple and it works and that's that's the greatest idea. The most complicated shit is not the greatest idea usually. Uh, so yeah place um, I'm probably gonna make a bigger one although I might need to buy longer metal than for my frame that sucks <laughs>